Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. How was that? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Today we're talking about something that folks out there said is a unicorn. It'll never happen. Never ever exist. Now it exists. I just had to step out of frame and get it. Yes, though Yeet Cannon is out. <laughs> there you go. So what we're going to do here today is I'm going to put my first 100 rounds through this. Show you guys everything that happens and share my thoughts on shooting the first 100 rounds. So we're gonna get all into that. I want to remind everyone out there the high point that makes the YC-9, that's what it's called, YC-9, you know, Yeet Cannon, nine millimeter, everyone's been waiting. High Point has been sponsoring the podcast that we do, Who Moved My Freedom, for years. So we appreciate those guys. And of course, you know, we might be biased because they support us, but I'm still going to share everything that happens with this as it happens with you all. So let's get all into it right now. All right. So let's put the first shots through here. I'm going to start out with the Winchester 124 grain white box, and then we'll switch over to the Fort Scott. Okay, there we go. All right. So first 10 shots with the Yeet Cannon 9mm brand new from High Point Firearms. This is my first time doing this. Let's see how it goes. Okay. That hung up a little bit. Let's see. Oh. That is a little sideways in there, so that is not... That is not fixable. Let's get that out. Okay, there we go. Actually, went in. Okay, and we got. We have. We should have two left in here. There you go. All right. So now I'm gonna switch over to the Fort Scott. I don't know if there's any kind of break-in necessary here, but. Let's switch over to the Fort Scott Munition stuff, which has uh, that tumble upon impact. It's a little pointier up front. Let's try that out. See how this is. Ready? Okay. Ran all the way, didn't lock back. Okay, let's load up more magazines. That's 20 rounds, Lola. So what I'm gonna do is switch to the regular stuff. I'm gonna go to the Federal, uh, what is this? Federal white box. Uh, what are we looking at? 115 grain here. So this is very similar to the Fort Scott because the Fort Scott's also 115 grain. So let's put that in this magazine. This is not going to come with two magazines, just one. We are doing T and E here, so um, you know we we obviously need a few magazines. Otherwise, this will take forever. You will be able to buy extra magazines separately. So there you go, ten rounds. You know you got this kind of like lower double stacked, moving up to a single stack going, which is completely new. Not like the uh, original magazine at all, so not cross-compatible. <laughs> nope, not cross-compatible whatsoever with your old mags. Let me, with this other one, I'm gonna keep putting uh, some Fort Scott stuff in here. 
the Fort Scott actually just worked pretty good, but there might be a little bit of a break in. So I'll give that to them. We didn't like go through this, uh, lube it up or anything like that. That's, I don't ever like get a gun and lube it up. However, it comes from the factory should be good in the beginning. And I have done maintenance to a high point before. You really need to be careful when you're doing that. Just on the original one, stuff could pop out. I don't know about this new one, so we'll see. I'll start off with the Federal. And actually, let's go over here, Lola. I want to see how accurate this is. We don't have paper out here right now. We'll do something more detailed here in the future. This is just like quick first shots. But we'll do something more detailed where we shoot a paper and all that. But right now, I want to see, can I hit this ransom? You ready? Up. Oh. That didn't chamber. I didn't load it properly. Here we go. Okay, a little high. There we go. I There we go. Hit it again. Okay. <laughs> so no issues that time. You know, not really drop free though. I'll just say that. You got to get that magazine in there. See like now it's in and not drop free. So that would be nice. Let's make sure that's in. Let's make sure we chamber. There we go. All right. I'll try it with the Fort Scott stuff here. Oh, hi. There we go. Oh, and it locked back. <laughs> Locked back that time. So, actually, not bad. Not bad. All right, more shots. What are we up to? We're 40. 40 rounds. 40 rounds. I think I'm just going to do more Fort Scott than anything here. Or should we just keep... You know, I'll switch. I'll switch. I'll switch back to the Winchester on one magazine. Just for the folks out there who have to know. They have to know. We'll go back to this. Or should I should I switch up so we'll go 124 grain is on the bottom and the first five we'll do the 115 and we'll see if we don't have any troubles here then we can I feel like we could safely say that we went through whatever like break in needs to happen or needed to happen there okay so let's start off with our mix i think like we said we've got the uh heavier stuff on the bottom all right i'm gonna do some rapid shots see how this goes okay that didn't feed in okay there we go so i was able to keep that moving now let's go to the fort scott stuff and there we go. All right. Yeah, so that worked. It just didn't lock back that time. All right. So overall, not too bad. What are we up to? Uh, 60? 60 rounds? Okay, cool. All right. Let me. See. I'm just going to shoot Fort Scott stuff from now on. I think we got some of the regular stuff there going. I'm just going to throw some Fort Scott in here. From what I've seen, there's been no issue. So I'm just going to rock and roll with that. It's light. Well, or let's see. Maybe there, you know, I think we probably had like maybe one little hang up or something with the Fort Scott. So we'll see. We'll, we'll do this and then we'll do the other thing, you know. You know, if you look in the description, there's a code we have for something. I won't tell you what it is, but you could save some money. You might want to use that. It's always there whenever you need it. <laughs> All right. See? All right, let's do this here. Go did lock back on that one. Okay. Got it out. And here we 
we go. Target. Ran all the way till empty. Did not lock back on that one. There you go. Yeah, so now we're at about 80, right? Yeah, let's go to 100. All right. It's getting a little hot. I can feel it, yeah. It's a little hot. It's not like I have to move my hand away or anything, but I can feel like it's warmed up. That's all good. Um, this is going to be the last 20 rounds. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off with the Fort Scott munition stuff. I'm going to go for that ransom target that I have down there. See how accurate. That's probably like a big high point thing. I don't think anyone questions whether or not they work really. They just say, yeah, is it accurate? How is all that? I could tell you right now, initial thoughts at eh, the trigger, mm, not so, not so big on the trigger. I'm trying to make sure I have a good grip on it. There is a grip safety here, which I'm not a fan of. And then there's another safety there, which I'm not a fan of. I'm trying to make sure like my thumb doesn't push that up. And then that creates a problem, but uh, weight and everything, eh, you know, it's okay. High point tends to be a little heavy. And then this particular one is threaded. They're not going to come threaded so far as I know. I think there's going to be some different versions. So the initial ones probably won't be threaded. But then you can get threaded. You could get uh, red dot. There's some different options you'll be able to get. We'll, you know, we'll get into all that here just now. So let's try this and see how accurate I could be with my 10 rounds of Fort Scott munitions. The, the sights I feel like are good. You know, I probably need to hold a little bit lower than my usual sight uh, picture that I make with a Glock, let's say. Let's see how that goes. Or like a, a Walther, which I use a lot. Didn't, didn't, I didn't chamber it. It's my fault. Okay, so it's a little hot. There we go. A little hot. There we go. There we go. There we go. A little hot. <laughs> so you could hit, you could hit something, you know. Let's see, is it gonna drop free? <laughs> oh, it dropped. He's got to shake it like a man. Give us us free. Give us us free. Do you know where that's from, Lola? Amistad. Amistad, yeah. There you go. All right. So now I'm trying the 115. I can't remember. I think that was the Federal that was 115. I think the Winchester was 124. So I'm going to try that and see how it is. We didn't have any issues there, really. So let's see how this goes in terms of accuracy. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, and lockback. All right, 100 rounds. Let's talk about it. Oh. Let's see, drop free. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so there you go. That was my first 100 rounds. Please feel free to let us know what you think here, what you think about it. This is my C9, High Point C9. I've had this now, man, I'm gonna assume it's like eight years or something like that. I actually bought this for less than 100 bucks. Back in the days, I did a video talking about can you buy a firearm that you could protect yourself with, defend yourself, right? For less than a hundred bucks. This was one of them. Bought it from a pawn shop for less than a hundred bucks. So uh, over the years, I have found, I, I don't think I knew the High Point folks back then. And over the years, I found this is a this is a relatively good gun, right? Affordable. It functions. High Point covers this. When I went to uh, clean this at first, some springs popped out. And I was never able to find them. I got in touch with High Point. They didn't ask me for anything except my address, and they sent me the parts I needed. I looked at videos on YouTube, surprisingly, and I figured out how to do it right. So, yeah, great gun. And I think now when we switch over, I want to show you the Yeet Cannon, the YC9. Here we go. That's what it looks like. What do you think about the differences between this and that? This and that. I think it's, um, I was trying to tell Lola, it's almost like if, you know, you ever saw those things of uh, Jason Momoa 
with a beard and without a beard. So without beard, a beard, please. with a beard, without a beard, uh -uh. with a beard. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's almost like me without a mohawk, which if you go way back, you'll see that. <laughs> and then with a mohawk, definitely way sexier with a mohawk. Okay, so first question, we're talking about it right now. How does it look? To me, it looks way better. It still has that high point DNA, I feel. You know, it has that for sure. But I can, I can tell you that there's definite changes in these two guns. As I've said many times, you're not, I'll uh, read out from a sheet here that they sent with us for this T and E, but it's not gonna necessarily come with the threaded barrel or you can also get, I've got a 10 millimeter here. So if you check out this 10 millimeter version, that we've done videos on here on the channel. This is threaded, it's got a red dot on it. Um, you know, very nice if you wanna get into 10 millimeter game affordably. It's not gonna come, and this has also the new grips. So it's not coming like that, but eventually you're gonna be able to either order those things separately, or depending on what state you're in, you're going to be able to get those combinations, you know, when you buy it. That's all just like legal stuff that the firearms industry has to deal with these days. So, major changes. I think the slide is completely different. You know, completely different on the slide. You do have now, and you had it before, you had adjustable rear sights, so you could take those out to put your red dots on, but now they're using more of a Glock style front sight on there, so that's nice. And, um, of course, you know, that you can the option of getting the threaded barrel is a change. I think even if you look at the back, like this slide is completely different here on the back. It's similar, like I said, DNA, you've got the new high point logo there. But uh, I would say a taller slide, maybe a little bit wider. Definitely some new engineering in there. We're not taking this apart yet. We're going to do things like that in the future when we get all the guys together. So uh, different markings here. It's going to have Yeet Cannon on it. Uh, the markings are going to be highlighted. The new logo, the new H for High Point logo is in there. So, and then, of course, your grips here, right? Nicely textured. I like that. Definitely better grip on it. It had a safety. The original had a safety here. This has a safety. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. And then, to step it up in safety, they put a backstrap safety. Some people are going to like that. I personally feel like I don't need that. But once again, that's probably based on um, laws. <laughs> what are we going to do about those laws, man? It's getting bad. Another thing I'll tell you over the original one. So I'm going to take this magazine out. It's safe. And I'm going to pull the trigger. See? Trigger pulled. Right? I could pull that trigger. Now, this magazine is out. It's safe here. I'm going to pull that trigger. Cannot pull it. So it also now has a magazine safety. So you got to put the magazine in, in order to pull the trigger. Ah. Personally, that's another thing that I'm not a big fan of, but I really do get it, right? I think that um, there's, there's folks out there, we won't get deep in the weeds about politics right now, but there's people out there that are making it really difficult for the firearms industry. And these are the end results that we get here. Now, talking about the magazine safety, the magazine has changed very different from your original magazine. So uh, the original is this one here, my left hand, skinnier, single stack, uh, 10 rounds. The new one is still 10 rounds, but it's a double stack on the bottom and then graduates to a single stack up top. You know, still 10 rounds, like I said, I'm pretty sure that has to do with laws, but I'm feeling hopeful that means some point here in the future, and I don't have any word on this from High Point. One of the things we'll do as part of this whole rollout that you guys are probably noticing right now, like I'm not the only one, there's a whole bunch of people putting these out. That's how it goes, right, in marketing. What I'll do is I'll get High Point to come on the podcast and talk to you guys and answer questions. But my feeling, this is my gut guess, some people in freer states may have the ability in the future to get more rounds, which would be awesome. That would be awesome. How is the new grip texture on a sweaty day like this? I think the grip texture is great, you know. Um, with my hands, I don't really have a big problem getting it. This is a, this is a, a C9 
Is this a compact? I know that they made a bigger version of this, but they're kind of the same size. I don't really have a problem getting my hand around it, but this definitely feels more secure. The thing I don't like is really the triggers, and the trigger was always squishy. That's a squishy trigger right there. This trigger, I, I don't really, oh, I gotta put the magazine in. <laughs> eh. I don't see, then I gotta take the magazine out. Well, no, I can't take the magazine out. Oh boy, okay. Um, put the magazine in. Eh, I don't, I don't know that the trigger has changed tremendously. It just really doesn't feel like there's a, you know, maybe technically engineering wise inside they've changed the trigger. I don't know that I could, could tell there's a big difference in that. And I don't expect like a high end trigger out of this. Although it might be cool if someone did do a trigger upgrade for it. What about the sights? Sights are awesome. I love the, well, the sights on there before weren't terrible. But having that Glock sight and then like for this, you know, it's in a different color or you could do ghost, ghost ring. You could do all kinds of stuff, I guess, right? Well, you With can the, get all these things in a kit too. Yeah, so um, the sights I think are great. And you could see from the shooting that we did that, you're, that you could use this and hit a target and defend yourself even where um, over 10 yards. So good. So I think that's the major changes. I'll take this uh, out of my pocket here and go over it. We won't show it. And when you guys are seeing this, there's probably already going to be YC9s. The Yeet Cannon's going to be in store. So hopefully that's what they're shooting for here. It looks like it's going to be out like middle of August. And hopefully that continues. We're right now in, what are we, middle of July, right, Lolo? So we've, we've got some time and you guys will see more stuff coming out from us with this. So let's see. They said uh, one magazine is coming out, no optic, no Picatinny rail as well. So you notice that Picatinny, um, well, actually, this Picatinny rail, I, I feel is like it's going to be on there, but you can get a Picatinny rail to go in here. So that won't come with it, but you could buy all that stuff, which is nice. Um, you know, you might want to put something on a Picatinny rail on top. So it says all that, you'll be able to purchase it. Um, complete is a redesign of the C9 with a new frame incorporating backstrap safety, new style grips, more modern looking angular slide, threaded barrel, double to single stack proprietary magazine. I think we're here. Keep your fingers crossed on that one. We'll get more rounds. Glock style removable front sight, rear sight that is slotted to accept your mounting plates for an optic. And the large frame pistols in 40, 45, and 10 millimeter just transitioned to Gen 2 with similar looks to the YC9. So you guys will see all that. Um, that's what I was talking about with the 10 millimeter, which we've done stuff on. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of 10 millimeter just because it's all expensive. The guns are expensive. The ammo is expensive. But if you can want to get into it affordably, this is the way to go. So now initial, my initial impressions on this, um, do I think it's better? I guess that's probably the first question to answer, right, Lola? Uh, yes, <laughs> I think it's better. There was a, it seems like there's a little bit of break in with this one. And these are advanced copies that we're getting. So I'm going to give these guys a little bit of, you know, leeway here. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I'm, I'm probably a little biased. But it really wasn't too bad from what I've seen. We had some issues. They kind of like smooth themselves out. So I'm going to go for that's like a little bit of break in. So that's a, that's a small negative there. We tried some different ammo. It really does. It, it, it feels like a different gun. It looks like a different gun. I, I would say that it's cool and it's still going to come in at a really good price, which I think is a big deal. So overall, I'm happy about this. And I think that um, not only the folks out there who want to get an affordable option, but I know a lot of the guys in the 3D printing world have like designs and ideas around this, things that they want to do. No, High Point's probably not going to work with you on that. But hey, now you've got this new one that you can mess around with. And do some stuff with on your own and it's affordable to get it probably around what it would cost for you to get a kit you know like if you're trying to get a Glock kit uh, different parts you're probably gonna pay more money than this so overall I think that it's good except I have to say that I hate the extra safety stuff like that I hate the magazine thing that the magazine has to be in there just to pull the trigger I hate that but those, that would, be, that would be my negatives there. And the other thing I want to say, Lolo, before we wrap this up and then move on here, I don't want to make the video too super long. Um, I don't know, Lola. Now the classic 
C9. It's looking Punk. good, right? It kind of looks classic to me now. I've kind of got some nostalgia <laughs> over it. I, I don't know. That might sound so weird and crazy to people out there. But, yeah. You know, high points have been really, I think, in the affordability market, some very good guns. Uh, high point stands behind them. It took a long time to get to this. And I think they were just trying to make sure that everything gets out there and is right. And I would say overall, this does, you know, very well here in the first shots. Not, I wouldn't say 100%, obviously, and, and I've run everything in here, but I would say it's about 90, 95%. What we're gonna do here on the channel is, I'm gonna get my boys in here, we'll get Babyface P and Walter. Right now, they don't even know about this. I'm under NDA, came and talk. Lola's lucky she even knows about this. We had to let her in so that someone could film the video, but I will get those guys out here. We'll shoot this, put a lot of rounds through it, we'll get their opinions like we usually do. So until then, I want to thank Lola for recording this. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Catch the Who Moved My Freedom podcast. It's actually on Player, which used to be Utreon. That's now Player. You can catch us over there. We do it live. And then we also put it up on YouTube. It's on Who Moved My Freedom. That's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're out of here. Peace.